Hey friends, and welcome back to the Alex Makes VR podcast. In today's episode, super short and sweet one, I feel, uh, coming on, I want to just dive into the concept of not trying to sell the unsellable. Do not try to sell the unsellable. It's the number one rule when starting out as a freelancer or starting your own business. I'll be diving into all that in this episode. If you have a subject or thoughts or things that you want me to explore in future episodes, please reach out to me. I would love to hear from you. You can reach me at AlexMakesVR on Instagram and Twitter. And I also send out a fairly regular newsletter. At the moment, it's every time these uh, podcast episodes come out in future, it might drop down to once weekly. Uh, But I send out a regular newsletter to give you the insider tips and tricks on all of my best kind of stuff um, towards creating a career or a business in VR and 360 that you love. If you want to sign up for that, do so at alexmakesvr.com. So, I think this is going to be a super short and sweet episode, but it's such an important concept to wrap your head around. Do not try to sell the unsellable. I remember a few years ago, a friend of mine was starting a company um, in a totally different industry, nothing to do with the creative industries. Um, It was actually in a kind of very specific niche within recruitment. And she said to me, Alex, I'm just, I'm, you know, it's the first time I'm going out by myself. And I just, I'm just scared because I really hate sales. And I was like, what do you mean you hate sales? You can't, you can't go into business for yourself and hate sales. Like that makes no sense. And we, we, we kind of talked for a good kind of hour or so about her business and about her passions and why she'd started the company, blah, blah, blah. And when we got onto the topic of like why she hated sales, it became really apparent very quickly that the reason she hated sales is because she was trying to sell the unsellable. She was she she wasn't kind of refining um, or or um, you know reaching out to people that she had a shot of convincing to use her company. And this is so important, right? Um, it's it's kind of like a bit like when you are in a really fierce argument with someone and there are just some people uh and not even just some people like people in general i feel like feel like this way about particular topics there are some people that are just not willing to change their mind there are some people that are just so stuck in their ways or they are they have such a um a closed mind to things that they just can't there's nothing you could say that could convince them otherwise. And you could have the best argument for why, in in our case, VR or 360 was the solution to that person's problem. But they just don't want to hear it because they've already decided in their head that, you know, tech is the enemy, that, you know, that or they don't see the point in it, or isn't that just for gamers, or whatever it might be. They've already made up their mind. Those are not the kind of people that you want to waste your energy on. Now, granted, at some point down the line, that person might change their mind. Maybe it will take until uh, the tech is much more widely adopted. Like, for example, there were people that, um, you know, slated the iPhone when it first came out. They said, ah, it's a phase. It will never take off. Smartphones will never take off. I think, in fact, uh, Blackberry, uh, do you remember Blackberries? Um, I think it was probably, I think I remember hearing an anecdote about it was their company that was like, nah, it will never take off the all, the all glass, uh, display, you know, no buttons. People like buttons guys. People love a keyboard. No one's, we're never going to get rid of the keyboard. People will not take this up. It will not last. We're not worried. <clears throat> Ooh, awkward. (laughs) Imagine being that spokesperson for the company. Ooh, painful. It's a bit like Blockbuster. Did you know that um, uh, Netflix uh, offered themselves to be bought by Blockbuster? They kind of went looking for a buyer. I can't remember what year it was, but it was before, obviously, they turned into the most powerful streaming giant in the world. And they offered 
offered up their uh, their company to potentially be bought by Blockbuster, who at the time were obviously the kings, um, the dominant uh, force in the video and DVD rental market. And Blockbuster said no, because again, they just could not, they didn't have the vision. They just couldn't see the point in it. That's never going to take off. You know, people, people don't want to, you know, people like the experience of renting a DVD or a video. VHS, God, do you remember that? Anyway, um, now I don't even, it's crazy because it's like now I don't even, I literally sold my whole DVD collection recently because I realized I don't even have a device in my house that could even play a DVD, even if I wanted to watch a DVD nowadays. Um, anyway, my point point being there will be some people there will be some companies there will be there will be people that you come across in your journey that just will not budge they are not interested do not waste your time trying to sell the unsellable you want to go after people who either already kind of are endeared or uh, adventurous or innovative and and kind of are looking at the space of VR and 360 or emerging tech because they're going to be way more open to the conversation. Now, of course, VR and 360 has to deliver on its promise, which is that it's the most valuable format that they could be doing X, Y, Z in, whether it's training or marketing or uh, using it as a sales tool or recruitment or whatever it is, it has to still prove the point. But there's going to be some people in your journey that will already be bought in before you've even had a conversation and that your job then is to kind of a make sure that um, you are kind of showing that you're the right person for that job but also making sure that um, what you deliver will actually um, hold up to the standards and the expectations that that person has right but the most interesting people and the majority of your clients will come from people in the middle they might not even know VR exists yet and they might not, it's not something that they're looking for, but they have a problem and they don't yet know that VR or 360 is the solution to that problem. And so it's your job at that point, you're going in there and showing, you're opening their eyes, you're bringing them into this world and your your job is to go in there and kind of show why VR and 360 is the solution to their problem. And you'll know very, very quickly if those people are open-minded or if they are open to the discussion, because they will show you whether it's saying, you know, whether it's uh, responding to your kind of um, outreach email saying, you know what, this sounds interesting, let's have a phone call, or whether it's, yeah, I'm interested in hearing more, or, hmm, you know, it seems a little bit scary to us because the tech is so new, but we'd be open to the conversation. Can you come in and give us a demo? Whatever it might be, they will show you very, very early on whether they are open to it. Do not waste your time with people that respond in any other way than showing a slight interest. It's fine if they're hesitant, but even if they are open to the conversation, do not, if someone, if you email someone and they reply, oh, no, thanks, would, you know, no, thanks, even just no, thanks is like, okay, great, thanks so much for your time, move on. If they reply, you know, even stronger with, um, oh, uh, we've looked at this before, and it doesn't work. So no, thanks. If you want to, you could spend your own, it depends on how much you, you value your time. If you want to, in that scenario, you could potentially go back to them and say, oh, um, I'm really sorry to hear that. I'd be really curious to hear um, about your experience. Um, you know, would you be willing to get on a call for 15 minutes? Because then you could maybe understand where they're coming from uh, and maybe see if there's a way of kind of saying, oh, you know, that's really unfortunate. Usually it comes down to something like they were delivered a product uh, which then they didn't have the infrastructure to support. So it might be that they got a VR headset, but then no one used it because no one in the company knew how to use it. Or, um, you know, it was used once, but they didn't find a good way to kind of uh, keep people coming back for more, whatever it might be. But there might be a way to to kind of take that experience and flip it on its head. But I really, I really, especially if you're just starting out, I wouldn't spend your energy on that. I would go after the people that are open and excited about the opportunity or the or the um the idea of working with you with this new medium don't waste your time trying to sell the unsellable it is a waste of time okay go for the people in the middle go for the people that are on the fence go for the people that uh might not have even ever heard of it but as soon as they have they're like oh 
oh, I mean, I'm a bit scared, but I'm, I'm curious. Those are the people you want to go after. I promise you. I promise you, you will not regret this. Don't, anytime someone comes back and says no, do not waste your time. Thank you for your time. You say thank you for your time and you move on to the next one. Because for every day, hour, minute that you spend wasting your energy on someone that is just unconvincible, um, the more time you're taking away from potential to kind of talk to those people who are in the middle or who are open. And the other big thing, and this comes back to the point, um, the anecdote I was saying about my friend, I said to her, um, she said to me, like, why do you love sales so much? And I was like, well, I don't really think of it as sales, to be honest, because the thing that I'm doing, I love it. I love it so much. I'm so passionate about it. If if I went into a company and they said, hey, we want to do um, some VR training. Uh, yeah, we've got this huge 5,000 person event and we want... Um, yeah, we've, we really think that we could do like VR and it'd be really fancy and it's, you know, essentially just a piece to camera. I'm going to be like, no, oh God, that's a terrible idea. That's the worst use of VR ever. Like what a waste of money. Unless you're going to use it as a marketing opportunity to then get press on the fact that you're so innovative. That is a complete waste of money, a terrible use of VR. Do not do that. I, I would rather say no to work or if if kind of I don't think that VR is the right solution to that person's problem I will absolutely say that I have to I have to believe in the product I have to believe in what I'm doing and I have to genuinely believe that is is the best thing for my client and if I don't believe it if I don't believe it's the best thing uh, for the client, if I don't believe in the project, if I don't believe that it's going to achieve what it should achieve, I will walk away because I would rather not stake my reputation on something that goes horribly, horribly wrong. So just be mindful of that. Go into a situation and, and it's very easy to, it's very easy to love sales when you are genuinely passionate about what you're doing and you genuinely know that your services or product can help that person and that's so important it's so important to remember that so if you're feeling a bit it's maybe because you're not quite clear yet in your head um what it is that you want to do and what it is that what the value of what you're offering is if you go in there with the attitude of just oh I just really want to do this virtual tour because actually I quite I just quite need the money that's that's going to be harder to believe in yourself than going in there and thinking I know that your problem is you need to get more people interested in this property. And I am so confident that if you bought one of my virtual tours, you would 10x the interest in this property. You would 10x your likelihood of selling this in the first, you know, six months or whatever, or whatever the timeline might be for sales or like, I don't know. You know, you get what I mean. You've got to really believe in what you're doing. And if you don't believe it, then why should anyone else believe it? So don't sell the unsellable. And, and, and kind of the, the second part to that is make sure that you're so clear and you're so passionate and you're so, you so believe in what you're doing and the product or service that you are selling or offering. Um, really believe in the value it can bring to someone and it will make the whole process so much easier. And if you go into a situation and you think, do you know what? I'm not confident that this is going to deliver on what they want, then walk away because your reputation and the way you feel about yourself and what you're doing in life is way more important than money. Let me tell you, I promise you, if you, you've got to make decisions that you're proud of, basically. And if you're ever in a situation like that, if, if your gut is telling you, do you know what? Mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like, even though they're really gung ho about it, it feels like they're just doing it because they think it's like cool and innovative. And I don't think they've fully thought through how they're going to implement it or how it's going to work or how it's going to. Then, I mean, me personally in that situation, uh, I would walk away because I just don't feel like it's worth it 
because down the road, who do you think is going to get the blame? It's going to be excuses about like, oh, the quality is not good enough. That's why it didn't work. Or, you know, oh, it wasn't easy enough to do or whatever. It's going to come back potentially to reflect badly on you. So uh, anyway, this has gone into a bit of a side tangent as always. Um, But coming back to the original point, I will leave you with this. Do not sell the unsellable. It will make your life so much easier. And genuinely, you're just going to really love doing what you're doing. Like, because when you reach out to people and when you start to solve people's problems with VR and 360, that feels so good. It feels so good when you have a client that says, do you know what? Like this piece of work has actually transformed our business or we've had such an amazing reception to this thing. Like people were crowding around us at events or, you know, oh, we got some really amazing newspaper coverage because of what we're doing. And that has led to so much more opportunities although I know I've just said that don't let people use it as a you know what I'm saying though do you know what I mean like when you when you have kind of when you provide when you produce and provide work that goes on to have massive impact in someone else's life there is no feeling like that so just make sure you feel really good about working with someone and really good about what you're selling because ultimately at the end of the day if the person if the if the relationship starts off with you having to desperately try and convince someone why uh, they're wrong about VR and 360, chances are they're not going to be a great client to work with. It's going to be an uphill battle. And if they don't believe in it, then it's just better to move on and work with someone that can be shown the light. Yes. Okay. That's it for this episode. I hope this was helpful. If it was, I would love to hear from you. Reach out to me at AlexMakesVR on Instagram and Twitter. If you wouldn't mind taking five seconds to follow and subscribe on the podcast app, the the pod, podcast, <laughs> the podcast app that you're listening on, that would mean the world to me. And if you get any value from these podcasts, it would mean the world if you would tell just one person about it, someone within the VR industry, share it on Facebook groups that you're a part of, whatever it is. It would genuinely just make make my day um, if you would share it because I just love hearing. Selfishly, I just love hearing from people and I love hearing about your stories. I've had so many people reach out in the last week to say that you're taking your first steps, you're starting your business, you've got new clients, you're changing the way you pitch, you're changing the way you email um, and it's changing, uh, fundamentally it's changing your businesses and that makes me so happy. I'll never do that again. I'm sorry. (laughs) Okay, that's it from me. Have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye.